Okay, we're still doing what's called loans and investments. We're using recursive functions. We're putting these into our TI-84 graphing calculator. And the first one we put in uh, has a $25,000 loan. 7% is the interest rate. Don't ever divide that by 12 and say it's some weird decimal interest rate. The interest rate was 7%. This is saying 12 times a year you're going to make payments of $600. And if that sign there is a negative, you know you have a loan, the only way you can tell from looking at the calculator if it was a loan or an investment is this minus sign right there. Minus means loan, and if it's plus, it must be an investment, and it will grow every month. Okay, now, this worked out really well because I happened to guess a payment that would come out to 48 months, which happens to also be an exact number of years. You get how lucky that was? Okay, 48 is uh, four years. And in fact, after that last payment, they owe you money. But don't ever make the mistake of saying that it's 47 payments. It's not, because 47 wasn't enough. It was 48 payments of 600 but now they owe you 7419 all right make sure that your partner's calculator has u sub 48 at negative 7419 if it's not help them to fix it negative 7419 pausing all right so then everybody take a moment and figure out if you made 48 payments of 600 dollars and then they owed you $74.19 back, the question would read like this. How much total did you pay for the loan? You paid more than $25,000. Why did you pay more than $25,000? Interest. And so the other, another typical question is, how much interest did you pay? All right, so figure that out right now. How much total was it? And then subtract off the 25000 original loan, and then you'll see how much interest you have. If I remember right, it was like 28000 Anybody verify 28725 And actually do this through the pennies because we're going to do that for this whole unit. Thank you. And then I'm going to subtract the 25000 off. Since that's such a right nice round number, I can do it in my head. 3725.81. And that's not bad. It's one of the reasons that those bankers can build big buildings because you have one little car loan and they make probably about as much, now this may sound crazy, but as the people who sold them the car. You know what I mean? Like the people who sold the car to them usually make a profit. But there's not a huge profit margin on a new car. It might be two or three thousand dollars is what the dealer's going to make, and the loan company makes like the same amount. All right. So how could we have picked that payment? Well, first of all, four years is not a normal length for a car loan. Does anybody happen to know what a more normal length for a car loan would be? Not four years. You guys just don't know, I don't think, because it doesn't come up in the news very often. What do you think? There are unlimited, but here's the most common ones, five years and seven years loans. Those are the most common ones. Um, five is the most common. But as cars get more expensive, they're getting more creative about let's, let's make it a six-year loan or make, let's make it a seven-year loan. Okay. House loans, do you know what's normal? Yes. 15 and 30, very good. 15 is tough to do because you got to make much bigger payments, but 30 is pretty common for a 30 year loan. And on a bigger, fancier house, sometimes they have loans that last a little longer, like a 40 year loan that is starting to happen. Uh, but 30 is kind of your standard 30 year loan for a house. All right, now you should be able to take this and, like, by the time we're done with today, you should be able to tell me what this payment should be to make it exactly five years or seven or whatever you want. And what we used to have kids do was pretty lame. We would say, well, 
guess and check until you find it. So if you wanted to end on U sub 48, well, that'd be four years. What would it be for five years? 60. U sub 60? You just would play with it and you'd say, well, then we want a little bit smaller payments, so maybe try 550, and you just keep trying until you make it end at the right time. It didn't take too long, but, you know, I think five or six guesses. So there's a much better way. Let me show you. Open up your graphing calculator. And on that graphing calculator screen, you want to go to the button called Apps, A-P-P-S. It's kind of near the middle. See the button for Apps? This button right here. I made it red on the board if you couldn't find it. Underneath Apps, do you remember me saying about the calculator that they put these in order with their very best stuff at the top? The things that are used the most go at the top. And so, no surprise, the one I'm about to show you is Finance. It's the probably their best one. It's at the top of the list. Hit Enter. And then, once again, there's a whole bunch of Finance apps here. The one that's the best that we use a lot, number one. Hit enter again, the TVM solver. By the way, TVM stands for time value of money. Does money have a time value? Yes. I'll give you an example. Right now, if I owed you $100, would you rather have it now or eight years from now? I'm not talking about adding any interest either. Not a trick question. Better to have the money now than eight years from now. Here's why. Have you noticed that prices tend to go up over time? So if I give you your hundred bucks back eight years from now, it won't buy as much stuff as the hundred bucks does right now. You guys might not have been along around long enough or a consumer long enough. Like, you know, when you were up to age six, you weren't buying things much unless you went to the store and bought some candy or something. But Let's even just talk about candy bars. I remember the days of like 50 cents is pretty normal to buy a candy bar. My dad, much older than me, of course, uh, he remembered the, the days of five cent Coke. That was really common. It was a nickel to get a can of Coke or a bottle. At Back then it was a bottle, a glass bottle. The bottle of Coke was a nickel. And uh, you can imagine his horror when they started selling pop for a dollar. He was like, it used to be a nickel. Now it's a dollar because of the time value of money. Because prices go up over time. So $100 now is worth more than $100 later. There's only one situation where your money's worth more later, and it's really strange, and it's really bad for economies, so we try to avoid it. It's called deflation. That almost never happens, where prices get cheaper and cheaper over time. You might find small examples like electronics. Like I can tell you, my TV that I bought a few years ago, I could get a lot cheaper now because those big screen TVs have come down in price. But that's more like small examples of especially technology where things get cheaper. But that's rare. You're going to see over time things get more expensive. In fact, I made this prediction to kids the other day that you know how there's a dollar menu at McDonald's? Okay. Before you are even my age, it'll be the $5 menu. You'll be like, you can get something for five bucks? <laughs> wow, that's a great deal. Because now the dollar menu is, that's yeah, a good deal. I can get something for a buck. But in the future, they won't be able to afford to do the dollar menu. Okay, because there's a time value of money. All right, so that's what TVM stands for. All right, so let's put in some numbers. Well, here's an example. That problem we just did. N, though, is right off the bat, it wants to know how long N is number of months. The number of months that you want to pay for this thing. We just got done saying a normal car loan is five years. If I type five, do you get that's going to make it years? But don't forget, this is a calculator. Some teachers don't even know this. You don't have to put 60 in. You could type in five times the 12. And guess what it's going to say when I hit enter? 
60. So it knows how to make the 60 out of the 5 times the 12. 5 years times 12 months. See what I'm saying there? Okay, so we got a 5-year load at, let's keep this, everything else the same, 7%. Notice I used a whole 7. Don't put in 0 0.07. It says percent. 7 is the percent. The decimal, if it asked for that, would be 0 0.07, but it didn't. It asked for the percent. Okay, and next is PV. stands for present value. The present value. In this situation, do you get, we got 25000 from the bank. And so this value is 25000 We put that into our account. What payments are we going to make? It will tell us that later. So just hit enter to get past it. Future value, do you get that in this case, we want the 25000 in the future to have a balance of zero. So it's actually, the future value is going to be zero. We're going to pay it off. All right, and then payments for year 12. And then automatically the compoundings for year will jump to 12. And then give me your gut feeling on end versus beginning. Do you think most banks want you to pay them at the beginning of the month or would they rather wait have you wait till January 31st think about it which way do you think the bank would want to have the money at the beginning so we're gonna say begin will it make a difference yes yeah, slightly because if you make your payments at the end of the month you owe them more interest now I could argue either that end or beginning but I'm gonna for now say we should all go on begin okay all right, now which one did we want? We wanted to know what the payment would be. Does anybody, usually there's like one kid who knows how to do this. You don't just hit enter. How do you get it to tell you the payment? Anybody know? I'm going to give you one more hint. This is called the TVM solver. Yes? How do you get to solve? Alpha enter gets you to the word solve, which is right above enter. So alpha enter gets you to solve. And look at that. Tells you 492, and I'm going to round it, 492.16. Why is it negative? Because is that money into your account? No, that's money coming out of your account. The 25000 why was that money coming in? Because you got it from the bank. They gave you a whole bunch of money. They give you 25 grand, and now you're going to slowly pay it back. Okay. Next, we're going to look at the difference if this had been a higher interest rate. Okay, question. Okay, then you're both doing something wrong. So why don't you compare your calculator screens with somebody who is working, and it'll probably be some dumb little thing, some little decimal, Okay, why did I pick 7% interest? It's just, a, it's just a place to start. Do you get that an interest rate is something that's negotiable with the bank? You guys are pretty young, but I think you know that sometimes the price depends. I've had so many times where I go to a hotel or I call them and say, hey, I'm looking at making a reservation. They tell me the rate and I say, hmm, can you do any better than that? And then they're like, mm -hmm, we're going to look around, and then they type in a few things, look for the internet special. Okay, we can do this. And then all of a sudden the price just went down. Now, some things aren't negotiable. You can't walk up to the grocery store and say, you know, it says two bucks, but can you give it to me for a buck fifty? The grocery store will not negotiate, but a lot of places will. Banks are one that will. You can say, well, you know what? Down the street, they're offering six and a half percent, um, you know, uh, you're going to have to either come down or I'm going to go down the street to the other bank. All right, so here's another reason that the interest rate sometimes changes. Because some people have bad credit. Have you heard of that before? All of you right now have a credit rating. It's just for some of you, it hasn't. it's like a zero because you don't have any credit. How many of you actually know you do have credit? You've looked. Some kids usually have looked. Awesome. Do you actually know? You don't have to tell us, but do you know your number? Okay, cool. So if you haven't checked yet, you have a credit rating. And if you haven't actually built any credit, the main piece of advice I can give you is really simple. 
pay back any time you ever take any kind of a loan, including credit cards, that's a loan, pay them back on time. All it takes is one late payment, and boom, your credit rating goes down. You might go from a 700 to a 600, especially when you don't have much credit. If early on you screw up and don't pay your credit bill, like your credit card, you borrow something, you, you, know, you buy something on credit, and then you don't pay them back on time. That's the worst thing you can do. And so you have two people walk in there, and one's got really good credit. They might get 7%, and somebody's got bad credit. It could easily be 10% interest because they're like you don't pay people back our records show that you have a credit of 612 and that means you must not be pay paying people back the other thing that it is a, a sign of is if you borrow too much money then all of a sudden your credit rating goes down because like you already borrowed money from him and you borrowed money from that company and you got a loan out for your furniture you got all these loans so your credit rating is going down because it's going to be hard to pay all that back Okay, so bottom line, you want good credit. Let's imagine that uh, Bob goes in there, he's got bad credit. Change his interest rate to 10%, and then go to the solver. And instead of 492, it's 526. And he's like, I gotta pay like 30 more bucks a month just because I have bad credit. It happens all the time, like every day. On a house loan, it even makes a lot more difference because there's a lot more interest. All right. So now you should be able to figure out what the payments are for people now, and it's kind of cool. Imagine for a moment your mom says, I'm thinking about moving to a bigger house, and I'm thinking about buying this, and I'll need to take a $400,000 loan to move us into this bigger house. All right, start changing things on the TVM solver. A $400,000 loan, 400000 that's a lot, but to be honest, in this area, that isn't even a really big house. Okay, so you've got a $400,000 loan. Let's say, I'm trying to be realistic on, on rates and stuff. Let's say you get 4% interest because you have good credit, and that's kind of in the neighborhood of where the interest rates are. Not long ago, you could have got like 3.5%, but they're up a little bit. Not just because of your credit, it's just because interest rates change over time. So you've changed it now to $400,000 loan at 4%. Now, then, what else do you need to know? How many months? What did I say was typical for a house? 15 or 30, let's go 30-year 30 loan. So type in 30, but then you use that to say times 12 for the month. And then figure out the payments. And just in a few seconds, you can see, oh, about $1,900 a month. Now, you may feel like that's a lot, but let me give you an example. My kids uh, have all grown up now, and one of them is... Not all of them are growing up. I got one in college still, but I got two that had just graduated from college and they went out and got places to live. And one of them's living in an apartment and their apartment cost them 1600 a month. So do you get that for 1900 a month, it, you're buying a house? You know what I mean, that's not that bad of a deal. It's only 300 bucks a month more and you actually get to own the house at the end. Versus renting, you could do that for 30 years and you still don't own the house. Make sense? So 1900 a month isn't that bad. All right. You remember Bob with the bad credit? Because he, I had a friend tell me this once, said, uh, I only pay the bill when it's in a red envelope. That's when you know they really want your money. It's when the envelope for the bill comes in red. <laughs> so he actually had it happen. That's why he was joking about it. So anyway... If you do that, that means you have you're going to have worse credit. And again, some there's some extenuating circumstances where people have bad credit and it's not their fault. Like for example, this guy run ran a business, and the business. What happens to you if you have just done a bunch of jobs for people and they decide not to pay you? Like they don't pay you back. 
he told me about a uh, a situation where he had a moment where people owed him one hundred thousand dollars in bills that they hadn't paid him. So then, how's he supposed to pay his bills if people aren't paying him? You know what I mean? Like you do the work, and they know you did the work, and they they just aren't paying you. So all of a sudden, you can't make your payments either. Okay, anyway, so let's say Bob's got bad credit. He still wouldn't pay 10% on your house, but you easily could pay 6 Let's change that to a 6 and see where $1,900 payments go up. Holy smokes. 2386 that's about 2400 compared to 1900 That's $500 a month. Different, just because you had bad credit. 500 a month? Is that happening? I guarantee you it's happening right now, today in Minnesota. There's somebody taking out a loan right now that's 500 a month more than it would have been if they had better credit. That costs a lot. And could it all start because they were your age and opened up a credit card and then were just kind of irresponsible about it? Yeah, it could. That's how it starts. You get a credit card opened up, you buy some stuff, and then the bill comes and you forget to pay it. And all of a sudden, oh, it's two months later. Oh, crap, I should pay them. And you pay them, and it goes as a mark on your credit. Oh, late pay. No pay, of course, is the worst. Yes. Oh, so you figured out the grand total at the end after all the payments. And how much was it? A difference of how much? So that guy would pay $180,000 more total to buy his house. That's that's a big deal. And I, I'm telling you right now, all of you have a credit rating. Even if you have no credit, then, then your credit rating is NC, no credit. But as soon as you take out your first little credit card, it starts building your credit rating. And if you get too many loans, like you get eight credit cards, that's not good. It's going to lower your credit rating. Because they're going to say, dang, this person likes to borrow money. All right. So, anyway, I'm trying to teach you some stuff that will help you in the real world, in life, and teach you how this credit rating thing works. Also, on the credit rating, your credit card will charge you a higher interest rate if you have a bad credit. And one more thing, your car insurance. They check your credit, and if you have bad credit, you pay more for your car insurance, too. So you can imagine this person paying 500 a month more for their house, plus let's say they're paying more on their credit card, plus they're paying more on their car insurance. You see why it's a really bad thing to have bad credit? I mean, that can drag you way down. So anyway, do what you can. Now there are times, again, like I, my buddy where I totally get where he wasn't able to make his payments sometimes because people owed him a ton of money and he didn't have any. He paid it all, you know, used all his up, and he was waiting for their their money to come in from the jobs that he did for them. And anyway, so it can sometimes not be your fault, but sometimes people just do it to themselves by not being careful. All right. So one last question to see if you really have got this. Let's make one more loan, and this one's going to be uh, for a car again. And I'd like you to make a five-year loan. Let's say you're trying to be responsible, but you just graduated from college and your car dies. You've got no money because you just graduated, just starting your job. And you got to get a car. So you you find this car used that you that is in good shape and it's 8000 bucks. You walk in and thankfully you've kept good credit. And so they give you a decent credit or a decent loan rate of, let's say, 5% interest. $8,000, 5% interest, and you're going to pay it off over five years. How much are your payments? You get 150 ish? All right. So, again, if you got lost on that, it was five years, but you can't just put a five. You got to go five times 12. And interest rate, I said you got, what did I say you got? Five? Okay. And then you were borrowing eight thousand, and I go alpha solve, one hundred fifty bucks a month. Okay. 
All right, did you learn something about credit? All right, some of you already knew that maybe. Um, and did you learn how to use the TVM solver? Do you remember what TVM stands for? Time value of money, good. One last example I wanna give you is the cheeseburger. How much would you say it costs at a typical restaurant to get a cheeseburger? It totally depends, doesn't it? We're not talking, I'm not talking the dollar menu cheeseburger. Okay, yeah, they, those, there's our, I mean, I'm, they're all right. I've eaten them many times. Um, but like a typical restaurant where you would go sit down and order a cheeseburger. I like $12. That sounds like a nice number. I know at Smashburger you might get a little cheaper than that. You might start at like 7 and you get the drink and everything for 12 bucks. But I think we could agree that 12 bucks is a reasonable, like you could go to lunch for 12 bucks nowadays. All right. So then let's see what happens when you are 40 years older than you are now, which is kind of in the neighborhood of my age. So 40 years from now at an interest rate, this is going to be, instead of an interest, going to be an inflation rate of, well, typical over the long haul is about 4% inflation. 4%. The government aims for 2%, but a lot of times it ends up being like 4%. So we're going to go with 4% inflation of, how many years did I say? 40? 40 times 12, because we're doing a monthly. And the present value is $12. Payments? They don't have to make any payments. Right? And future value? I don't know, and that's what I want to find out. Okay, I better do this. Alpha salt. What does that mean? Typical meal is going to run you about 60 bucks. 60 bucks would be like going out to Chipotle with your friends kind of thing. You want to have enough to make sure you got enough? It'll be like 60 bucks. Unless you're in Venezuela. Have you heard about their interest rate? Or their inflation rate? It's a ridiculous amount. Let's just make it only a thousand percent. And let's see what cheeseburgers would be then. <laughs> Error. It's too expensive. It can't even handle it. That's awesome. I'm like, where's the error? Go to the error. I can't tell you the future value. It's too big. You could even just say, what's the value of a cheeseburger next year? Which would be 1 times 12, which would be 12, of course. I bet it'll calculate the cheeseburger then. The $12 cheeseburger is the $17,300 cheeseburger. The sad thing is they're actually living it. Like right now, it's actually happening. If you have any money, you know that like a few months from now, it's going to be worthless. Like how does that happen? I could probably teach a whole semester-long class on how that could happen, but a simple thing to say about it is that they borrowed a lot of money, and then what happens if you don't have enough to pay it back? Well, if you own the country, you can just say, We'll print more money. We'll just print a whole bunch of money. What does that cause? Inflation. What if you print so much money that the company that prints your money won't even give you the printed money because you can't afford to pay them? <laughs> it gets crazy. So they printed so much money that they got in huge trouble. There was more to it. It's always more complicated than that. Oil prices fell. And they had a lot of, that was part of their economy was oil, and oil prices went down a lot. That hurt. There's a lot of things. But bottom line, you don't want high inflation. It hurts bad. Okay. I think, I hope, you've learned something from this. Uh, and now let's do the Schoology quiz together. Are you ready? I'm going to pause for a second while we find that Schoology quiz. Okay, so the Schoology quiz says... 2-7, today's date, loans and investments, more practice, HHA, loans and investments, homework quiz. All right, the number one. You ready? The frequency with which the interest is compounded. How often? Yes. Very good. Uh, but all you'd have to say is 
four. You are exactly right that that's called quarterly, but how often does that mean four? Okay, so you'd put a four right here. And it won't let me write. So you'll have to trust me. And if I did write, do you guys see a thing up here that would allow me to write? Normally I can just pick up my smart board marker and write, but it won't for right now. I don't know why. Okay, anyway. Uh, and next one is the principal. That's the money you start with, which is what? 500, good. The interest rate. 4% and yes, you should say 4% with a percent sign or just a 4 and it'll assume percent. I like it better if you put the percent sign, but it'll accept just the number 4. Next, I know you, some of you might be thinking 0 0.04. Don't do the decimal on C. On C, do, it's a rate and so it's a percent. So 4. Next one, the payment or deposit, 25. And remember me saying not to use negatives? So just 25, okay? Then determine whether this is a loan or an investment. Which one is it? Loan, because of the minus sign, it's a L. Okay, number two. For the loan modeled by that, oh, it's back to monthly. I see that divided by 12 in there, right? And I can tell it's a loan because it has a minus. The number of months to pay it off. Did you know that you could actually use the TVM solver on this if you wanted to? Think about it. What would you hit solve on? The months. You want to use the solver for this? You may. If you want to use a, uh, put it back in the calculator the old-fashioned way with recursive sequences, that'd be fine too. All right. I think you're off and running here and you're going to do fine. But here's my question for you. Do you know where you want to go to college? Because starting tomorrow, we're going to start a project. Instead of taking a test for this unit, it's a really short unit, but this is a really cool project because you get to actually find out where the you might want to go to college. You pick a spot. It could be something practical like, well, everybody goes and applies at the U of M, so I'll just check out the U of M. And yeah, there's a probably 50-50 chance I'm going to go to the U of M, so I'll take that one. Or if you want to have a stretch dream kind of place, like I've, uh, my cousin goes to Dartmouth, I think that'd be really cool. Well, then check out Dartmouth. But you're going to be looking up the price tag. And I know not many people actually pay that price tag. So what we do to make it simple is that we say, we're going to figure that you probably only pay half of that price tag. Because either they'll give you loans or your parents will help you, or maybe they'll just cut down the price because you're good at cello. I don't know. Whatever reason, they're going to cut the price in half. But then at that amount, we're going to say you have to take loans out for that. So if the question becomes, if you had to take loans for half of the cost of the college you want to go to, how much would the payments be? Because you, you know now how to do all of that, but it's more like getting the data and I'll give you like the uh, two extremes here in Minnesota. One of the more expensive ones is the place I went, St. Olaf. Loved it, still a great school, but it's not cheap. It's like 62, something like that, tuition room and board. As opposed to, I got a kid right now going to NDSU. That's a good school, way cheaper. It's about 18,000 a year, tuition room and board. Compare 18 a year times four to 62 a year times four, and you got a big difference in price tag, right? In either scenario, we're saying, let's say you get about half of it paid for with whatever, loans, maybe it's you working, maybe it's mom and dad helping, whatever, but the other half has to be in loans. Then you'll be able to see, here's what my loans would be like if I went to this school. Here's what my loans would be like if I went to that school. All right, so that's kind of the project. So. All I'm trying to do is tell you ahead of time, start thinking, like tonight, this will get your subconscious working on it, what school would you like to focus on? And I know some of you are going to be like, I don't know. If you go, if you give me the, I have no idea, I'm going to say check out the U of M because it's local. And like literally more people apply at the U of M than any other school in the whole, I mean, for, for Minnetonka kids, 
More people apply at the U of M than anywhere else. It's the most common app. Okay? But I encourage you to just think and not just, just do the U because I gave you that as the standby option. Just think about it. Maybe there's some place you'd like to explore. Because when it's all done, you're going to make a little movie about it. You know the trailers option where you can build trailers pretty easily with the iPad? You're going to make a little commercial for this school. Say, here's where I'm going. You'll have some pictures. You'll have, if, if I want to go, here's what the price tag is right now. And we're even going to factor in, is the price going to stay the same for you and like hold still for the next six years while you, no, not six. Some of you guys are, let's say, freshmen. Four years from now, you're going to be going to this place. Do you think they'll hold their tuition zero increase between now and then? No. So we'll figure out what the price tag will probably be when you get there. You know what I mean? We'll adjust it for inflation and figure out, here's what it'll really cost you. Here's what it'll cost for four years. Cut it in half. Now take loans for that. And then we'll see what the price tag is for the loans. And for those of you that have that wonderful blessing that Grandma, you know, left you a bunch of money and that she's going to help you with college, at least you'll know, okay, this is what it would have cost me if I had to pay half of this in loans. And you, if you don't have to have those loans, you can say, oh, man, I'm glad I'm not going to be staring down $1,000 a month student loan payments. All right. So think about which college you might want to research. And your homework for tonight is that homework quiz. Those do go into the grade book. And remember, you're looking for 75% or better. If you do worse than 75%, sometimes it's those stupid things like you did it in the lowercase instead of capitals. But that's why I give you a 100% if you can get 75%. Okay? Don't ask me to change those unless you see one that you think is actually wrong. Like, I type this in, it's the right answer, and it's marking it wrong. Tell me about those. I'll fix, I'll fix the school as you quiz for that. Sir? I'd like you to round to the pennies, which is the hundredths, for this whole unit. Unless it tells you that otherwise. Like, if it says round to the dollar. Okay. That's all I have for you for today.